So sitting next to me here is a uh, Cummins ISB 6.7, came out of an international box truck. It had some valves trouble that went through one of the cylinders and caused a bunch of problems, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So what we're looking at now is actually weighing the cost of rebuilding this engine or actually going with a long block. And originally we were looking at rebuilding it, but kind of given the light of things, we might be going a different route and we'll talk about that. All right, so if you're new to the channel, my name's Ryan and I own a uh, commercial truck and trailer shop in Canton, Ohio. I've been in the business for about 20 years. Also been an owner operator out there as well for a couple of years. Your drivers, I kind of know what you're going through for owner operators and all that stuff. So we're always putting out videos of truck maintenance, a little bit of trucking business, truck repair and all that stuff. So if you're interested, please subscribe. Okay, so if you guys have seen the earlier videos, what happened with this is we had some valve trouble, which I'll show you here in a minute what exactly happened. I think I used the term drop valve, which is kind of loosely correct, but after looking at it, I got a little bit more of an explanation. When it did that, it trashed this whole first cylinder to where this isn't honeable, obviously, uh, and it will need to be cut out and put a liner in. And these have pretty thin walls, so yeah, there's this, it's only so much you can do with them. Also with that, the head is trashed. I talked to my warranty or a core rep and they're not gonna give us a core credit on that because it's got so much damage, it can't be rebuilt. So, and with the extra work to the block, we're gonna have about probably $1,000 in machine work, roughly, cost of parts. Now with that core charge back in, we're like at 7,000. So, I mean, and me putting the engine back to work, I mean, we're getting up to, you know, the $9,000, $10,000 mark before we even put it back in the truck, you know, with that labor, with considering taking the engine out and putting it back in. So, I wanted to uh, do a little shout out to uh, Rock Rooster Footwear. They were nice enough to send us out a demo pair of their uh, boots. Steel toed boots, Vibram sole, really light, really cool. This really nice, uh, just walking around boot, uh, in my opinion, a lot lighter than some of the other boots that I wear. So, like I said, we just wanted to give a little shout out to them. I uh, appreciate the, them sending out the product and like I said I like them. If you're interested looking for a nice pair of boots we got a 12% code a channel exclusive code that you guys can use uh, you can check out in the description below. I'm also a Jasper engine installer use them for smaller stuff I don't typically work on stuff this small most stuff I work on is twice the size you know 15 liters 13 liters so I actually have my rep here and they were looking at it, redo those, we can give you a quote on that. And I got a quote on a long block that was pretty competitive. So in a long block, if you don't know, is the head on down to the oil pan, essentially. With, uh, with On these smaller engine, it comes with your rear structure and front structure. So you're gonna get a new crank, new cam, oil pump, oil cooler, I mean, oil filter housing, all that stuff's gonna be on here. And then the long block that I'm looking at through Jasper, and he quoted me like 9,900. So I mean, for that much, extra stuff, you know, rods, crank, cam, everything done. It's really hard for me to compete with that, you know, for $9,000, for $1,000 more, I can have everything new. And then I've got a warranty backed by Jasper as well, instead of just my warranty. So it kind of takes a little bit of the liability off of me as well. It could be a win-win. I'm working with a customer now to see which route we're gonna go. But I mean, me personally, I'm kind of leaning towards that route because it's gonna take two weeks now to get the block done. Or I can have this other engine that's already put together in two weeks, the same time frame, so we can save a couple of days not having to put this together and get it back in the truck and get the guy rolling again and making money. So now, a couple of minutes ago, I said that this wasn't exactly what you'd call a drop valve. I mean, it's kind of a loose term, I guess you could use in this situation. So you can see the cylinders ruined. I say if you can catch that, if you can catch a bad spot with your fingernail, then it's not going to hone out, which honing out is just taking like a drill and a little a hone with three pieces of stone on it to kind of put hash marks back in the cylinder and clean it up. In this situation, obviously it's not going to work because it's cylinder one here is seized up. But what I'm holding in my hand here are the valve seats. So we're gonna go over to the head here and I'm gonna give you my explanation what I think happened. So this is the head. As you can see here, this is the valve seat. This one here is still intact. It's in the head for the most part. This valve up here, you can see that it's nice and clean in there like on that chamfered edge to where this valve seat came out. So I think it actually dropped the valve seat. That valve seat got caught in between the valve head and the cylinder head and it, then the cylinder came up and hit it and broke pieces off of this valve and then that stuff all got caught up in here everywhere and broke this other valve head off and then just everything just proceeded to get smashed you know at 
1500 rpms per minute like a you know battering ram basically I and mean, somehow it looks like there's some debris got in the other cylinders but they caused some damage to the pistons but not so much to the the cylinder head or the the walls of the cylinders so that's what i think happened uh, and like i said it's not a true drop valve i guess you could say because the valves are still in it i mean back here on the other side i mean you can see here that all the valves they're still intact. All the keepers are still on. Because normally when you have like a true drop valve, these keepers will pop off and the whole valve will fall down into the cylinder. So, so a little kind of an interesting breakdown here. That's what I think happened. So last point on this video is some people have asked, is this situation avoidable by maintenance, oil changes or whatever? In my opinion, this is just a fault. This happens with these engines, these ISP 6.7s. So it's one of those things where it doesn't really matter what you do, in my opinion. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. It's just like the lottery for, you know, either gonna win or you're gonna lose. If it's gonna do it, it's gonna do it. And, and really no amount of maintenance or anything, it's a manufacturing flaw. The machining wasn't right or that seat was too loose. It's just gonna happen. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all I can say. So that's pretty much it on this one, guys. Uh, like I said, I'm working with the customer on this to see what he wants to do. My best advice, once you start adding up the numbers on both columns, I mean, originally when I was going through Cummins, we were talking like eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 for a long block engine and like 22,000 for a computer complete engine, which would be your turbo. I mean, pretty much a drop in, ready to go engine, sensors, harness, everything. But uh, given that uh, we got uh, a lot more competitive quote, uh, I'm thinking at this point and with the extra damage, core charge situation, that we're probably better off to go with the Jasper long block remand. So uh, that's just something when you're in these situations or you're working with a shop, once you start adding stuff up, you know, you got two columns or three columns if you're looking at a long block, you know, complete engine plus rebuilding or whatever you're gonna do, just kind of work it out and see what's gonna be the uh, best option, what's the, what fits your budget, and you know, also look at what type of warranty and materials are going back in it too. So, so that's pretty much it again, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, uh, hit the bell for the updates, and like the video. So thanks, we'll see you next time.